a homeowner and an insurance agent and a roofer all work together to commit insurance fraud against the insurance agent's own company. I'm gonna to explain to you how they did it right now. But before I tell you the story, I don't want you to be tempted to think that this is just hearsay, that I heard about this from somebody that heard about this from somebody that heard about this. No, I actually heard about this from the homeowner himself who was bragging to me about the fact that he worked with his insurance agent to enable him to do this. So at the time that this happened, the homeowner had T-lock shingles on his roof, which are obsolete and it's becoming more of an insurance liability having T-lock shingles on your roof. Insurance companies don't like homeowners that have T-lock shingles. And so the homeowner went in to talk to his insurance agent because his insurance agent had told him that if you continue to have T-lock shingles, we're not gonna be able to cover you anymore. We're going to have to drop your coverage. So the homeowner was like, well, I don't know what to do. And the insurance agent told him that because they're obsolete, if there's even one damaged shingle on the roof that his company, his own company, State Farm, would pay to replace the whole roof. And so the homeowner said, but my roof doesn't have any, have any damage. It's in good condition. And so the, the agent told him, it only takes one damaged shingle. So the homeowner asked him, are you telling me that if I go up on my roof and damage a shingle that State Farm will pay to replace my roof? And the agent was like, well, I'm not officially telling you that. Now, to his credit, the homeowner did not intentionally go up on his roof and vandalize his roof in order to file the insurance claim. But he went ahead and filed the insurance claim. The adjuster came out and found a couple damaged shingles and said, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and pay to replace this roof because it's T-lock shingles. And so he got an approved claim to pay for the replacement of the roof. That leads us to the next chapter of our story. Well, the homeowner is a pretty handy guy. He actually built his house himself. And so he told his insurance agent that he wanted to do the roof himself and asked, it, asked the agent if he was allowed to do that. And the agent told him, well, of course you're allowed to do that. Then the homeowner said, but I want to keep all of the money from the claim. That's actually a pretty important detail. We've explained the difference between actual cash value policies and replacement cost value coverage policies in other videos, but for a replacement cost value coverage claim, you get two checks. So you get one check up front, and then you get a second check when the job is complete and an invoice has been sent to the insurance company. Again, very important detail. This homeowner happened to have an RCV policy, so he was gonna get two checks. That meant that an invoice needed to be sent to the insurance company, to State Farm, in order for him to get his second check released to him. Now remember, an insurance claim is paying for material and labor plus overhead and profit for the contractor that's doing it. Well, this homeowner was gonna do the job himself. So he wasn't paying for any labor and he wasn't paying for overhead and profit for a roofing contractor. All he was paying for was the material. So that cost was gonna be considerably less than what the full claim amount is. Let's say his total claim was $10,000. Remember, that pay, that's to pay for material, labor, and profit for the contractor. However, the total expenses that this homeowner was going to incur to get the work done was only going to be for the material, which if we're using a $10,000 example, maybe that's somewhere between $3,000 and $4,000, depending on what the material is that he's putting on the roof. But also remember that the homeowner didn't get all of the money from the claim up front. He only got that first check. So he got, you know, maybe four or five thousand dollars on that first check. So he still has several thousand dollars yet to to come to him after the job is done and an invoice has been sent to the insurance company. I'm not an insurance agent. I'm I don't work for the insurance board, so I don't know what the rules are about a homeowner doing the work himself and being able to bill the insurance company for his own labor. Most insurance policies state that a homeowner is not allowed to profit from an insurance claim. That means that the homeowner doesn't get to, to pocket extra money. And so for this project, the homeowner's expenses out of a $10,000 claim would have been 
like I say, between three and four thousand dollars. That was the expense which he incurred, and that was the only uh, receipts that he would have had to be able to send to the insurance company. So the homeowner then went to back to his agent and said, okay, well, the job is all done. The only receipts that I have are for the material, but I want all of the money from the claim. So the State Farm insurance agent said, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I know a roofer and I'll talk to my friend, the roofer and get him to create an invoice from his company for the total amount of the claim and then you can send that to State Farm and you'll get all of your money from the second check. So that means that for his total expenses of about three to four thousand dollars he got all ten thousand dollars of the claim of course minus his deductible but he got all of the money from the claim without incurring all of the expenses are having to hire a roofer to do the work. Now, like I say, insurance companies may have stipulations in there about when a homeowner does the work himself, can he bill for his own labor or not? That may be a legitimate thing. I don't know. But what I do know is that this homeowner, his State Farm insurance agent and a roofer all conspired together to commit insurance fraud they worked together to steal money from State Farm that State Farm otherwise would not have had to pay to that homeowner. I seem to remember reading somewhere, thou shalt not steal. Now, I've been very critical of insurance companies over the years in our videos, and so you might be tempted to think that insurance company, they, they had it coming to them. They deserved to get ripped off. But you know what, theft, is theft. I do not look at this as if this was some sort of Robin Hood adventure on the part of the homeowner and the insurance agent. Those people conspired to steal from State Farm. But there's even more that this insurance agent does to help his clients commit insurance fraud against his own company. So he's actually worked with this roofer and he refers this roofer to his customers because this roofer will pay the deductible for the homeowner. The insurance agent knows the roofer does this and that's exactly why he refers to his homeowners, his clients. How do I know that? Because that insurance agent has actually told me that. Well, that may not be a problem in the state in which you live, but here in the state where I live, Colorado, that's illegal. A homeowner is responsible legally to pay the deductible himself. A roofer is not legally allowed to pay, waive, rebate, or discount the deductible in any shape or form. So if a roofer is, is paying the deductible for the homeowner, then what that means is he's invoicing the insurance company an amount that is equal to the deductible more than what he's charging the homeowner. That's insurance fraud and this agent refers a roofer to his clients knowing that the roofer is going to do that. Just really quickly, here's here's a description of how that works. So if a homeowner's claim is $10,000, the roofer then creates an invoice for $10,000 and sends it to the insurance company. Let's say the homeowner has a deductible of $2,000. So then when the homeowner gets all of his funds, which on a $10,000 claim would be $8,000, then what, the, what happens is the roofer then just collects $8,000 from the homeowner instead of $10,000, even though the invoice that he sent to the insurance company was for $10,000. If he was only going to collect $8,000, then he should have invoiced the insurance company for $8,000 instead of $10,000, which means that the homeowner would have only gotten $6,000. That's why it's illegal, because it causes the insurance companies to have to overpay for claims. Hey, you made it all the way to the end of the video. That must mean that you liked it. So give this video right here a click because I'm pretty sure you're gonna like that one too. Oh, and be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon up there so that way you get notified when we've got new videos. I'm Tracy Bookman, owner of Homestead Roofing.